Patrick Dean could draw the Predator from memory with no reference material with amazing speed. He could knock out a Predator drawing amazingly fast. It's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. This is the story of a creative force who's had to face an enormous challenge. Patrick Dean is just a, he's a genius basically. He's a wonderful cartoonist, an extraordinary artist. Patrick Dean is something of a legend in Athens, Georgia. He is one of the co-organizers of the local mini comic festival in Athens, Fluke, a very like punk DIY affordable comics festival. He's one of the fastest, funniest, an amazing comic mind, both in terms of comics as the visual medium and comic in terms of his humor. I find his work so funny. In addition to being an extraordinary cartoonist, he's a wonderful person. It's really hard to be both funny and nice, but I think Patrick pulls that off really well. He's a great dude. This town absolutely is better because of his presence in it. Patrick is also a father. He's got two awesome kids. And he's a wonderful friend, you know, uh, just a, a pillar in the community below the all. But a few years ago, Patrick started having some unexplained symptoms. Patrick's speech had slowed down and was slurred. And we didn't know what was going on. Patrick didn't know what was going on. He was not being able to speak as clearly. It took him a long time to figure out what was going on. So he started going to doctors. I remember getting the message where he, you know, is very stark and it's still in my mind. You see this word bubble that just says it's ALS. ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. It's a progressive neurodegenerative condition that causes muscle weakness and paralysis. It's fatal. And as of yet, there is no cure. For someone who's only ever given his best to those people to wind up receiving from the universe the worst. It's an injustice. It's a horrible disease. Even saying that out loud is so stupidly obvious. It was such a shock. Uh, it wasn't anything that anybody ever could have imagined. I can only imagine how devastating that must have been for, for Patrick. Patrick decided to share the news the best way he knew how. He made a comic about it because he knew that he was going to have to repeat this news over and over and over. And so he put a comic online that was a full explanation of, this is what was happening. This is what is happening. Here is how I feel about it. He was working on his book, Eddie's Week, which is out now, finally. And then like in the middle of that, there was just this terrible announcement. And it was a beautiful work, a work that must have ripped his guts out to have to make. You know, once he was diagnosed, he started to go downhill relatively quickly after that. Losing his ability to speak was one of the first things to go, and, and then his ability to walk. For about two years now, he's been in a wheelchair. It's just, um, it's the worst damn thing. For about the, the last year, I'd say he's been completely immobilized. Despite being completely immo immobilized, He's been still drawing. Up until December, he was still drawing on pencil and paper, pen and paper, every day. His family would have to set up his table for him and put him at the table and physically place his arm on the paper, but he could still move enough to draw. There was a glove that he wore so that would allow his hand to sort of slide more easily across the paper. In December of 2020, Patrick posted a picture on Instagram of the last piece he would draw with his hand. Starting around in, in December, he lost even that ability. And now he's been drawing using eye gaze device where literally he's using his eyeballs. Eye gaze technology is an extremely beneficial technology for people with limited mobility or no mobility. He's looking at a screen and controlling the digital brush with his eyes. And that's, that's also how he talks. He uses his eyes to pick out words. In college, I used to draw comics in my sketchbooks with no intention of ever sharing them. No pencils or planning, just straight to pen and ink. And he's able to speak startlingly quickly. Lots of ways to play with shadows on the pages. I love using a lot of ink. 
Remarkably, Patrick continues to adapt and grow even as ALS takes its toll. It's been really cool to see his skills like grow super quickly. I can't imagine having to adjust to something like that. Just using a completely different part of your brain to do something that you've been doing since you were a child. But I think it, his stuff looks incredible. For Patrick to take to this format and create work that is still recognizable as Patrick Dean is absolutely amazing. It's, you know, pretty miraculous. You start to realize, even as you see his eye gaze stuff, an artist's line doesn't come from their hand, it comes from their brain. It's immediate and it feels like really hard earned. I think that it's a testament to the style that Patrick has established that these different formats of making this art are still cohesive and recognizable as the product of the same mind. He's just being so stubborn, making his spinning artwork and telling his story, completely just presenting his truth. If I had known I was going to get this sick, I would have started the sequel immediately after finishing Eddie's week. Still, I'm content with the ending. Patrick has confronted his situation in his art, squarely and honestly. Patrick is very brave. He's looking what he's going through and, and what he's moving towards uh, right in the face. He is making art about just this awful, heartbreaking thing that's happening to, to him and his family. Maybe if you're a fairly private person, you don't necessarily want to reveal all of your private medical issues and so on. I think that his ability to do that and to do things that are uncomfortable for him is very inspiring. People want to see stories with happy endings. Sometimes the endings just aren't so happy. Watching Patrick like refuse to turn away from that um, has been uh, tremendously meaningful to me as a person and as an artist. Now the community Patrick did so much to build is trying to help him and his family. Cartoonists, uh, they're not rich. There's no money in comics. There's often not, um, you know, adequate uh, health insurance. Most people have a day job or multiple day jobs just to make ends meet, let alone to deal with like, all the expenses that come with a horrifying disease like this. Um, so yeah, like they need the money. People need the money. <laughs> it's sad to me that that this society does not value its artists and its creators. With Patrick, you know, being the organizer of this this festival for so many years, he's been so supportive and so key to so many young cartoonists. It's been very moving. It's as soon as we put out the call, like you know, Patrick. Uh, needs help. The GoFundMe Patrick's friends in the comics community have set up is being used to pay for the thousands of dollars in care his insurance does not cover. It's so hard to both be able to appreciate Patrick's bravery, Patrick's strength, his family's bravery and strength, the tremendous amount that his his wife has done, Aaron, my friend Aaron, to, to uh, you know, battle with the, the medical system to make sure that he gets the care that he needs and deserves. Um, the tremendous strength his, his kids have shown and the love that they've shown for him. In a statement on the GoFundMe page, Patrick said he was moved beyond words by the support he and his family have received. Patrick's friends are also working to make eye gaze works available for purchase to help pay for his medical costs. Just watching Patrick work has always been so inspiring. This is Inside Edition Digital.